the mothers in our church, that is Assemblies of Christ, they would tell us, young people, we want you to grow and serve God and be neat like Charles. They used to call him Kijana Charles. When he promised people that you give them, you pledge for today for your space and they pay for the, um, the tires, the, the tiles for your the space where you sit. When we gave that money, the following Sunday, we found that place tiled. One of the things that was outstanding for me was the way the church was clean, very clean. In fact, it really scared me and I wanted to go away. And then uh, I also looked through the, the, the seats, the way the seats are arranged in the church, and you can tell this is a straight line, like they did it with a ruler. The day when I came in for the first time, uh, when uh, the church was small, that was back in the year 2006. And I loved the worship, I loved the church in the way they were doing their things, and also I loved the ministry of the word. Uh, I was among the first people who was able to get married to my wife to walk down the aisle and, uh, and uh, I was able to get my wife in, that, in, in, that, in the altar at the GCI Central Church in the first sanctuary. And uh, uh, my family, they were there, they saw it, they say, wow, what a beautiful church. For the first time I saw a church being marketed for excellence and I was in a class uh, doing marketing. Uh, and I think it was on customer care. And our lecturer uh, proposed that we visit his church and uh, to just witness a uh, customer care service in a church. Wow, don't I love GCI? The excellent way of doing things right from the gate up to the pulpit. The teachings are true doctrine, word of God. Gospel Santos International has come a long way Days, weeks, months, years and decades have come and gone, but one thing remains, our dedication to seeing the Great Commission fulfilled with excellence. As we celebrate our great history and heritage, we also dedicate ourselves to share Christ's love with the world. Talking of history, GCI to me is one of the dreams that I've come to pass in my life and which when I look back I simply say to God be the glory that's the word that I can use because when I close my eyes and I look back 31 years ago I realized that uh, there are things in life which you can never really imagine how they will look like after 31 years and especially when they are starting you tend not to have the real big picture how it will end but when you come to the place where you take stock and you look back and see what has happened over the period of life, I think you can only sum up everything by saying, to God be the glory, that's the word I use. Because the initial stages of GCI were very, very humble. This ministry began right into our sitting room in our home, where I would host students coming in from MTC. Because uh, we lived very close to the Kenya Medical Training, uh, uh, Training College right in Upper Hill. And uh, that time I used to attend church in Eastlands. And uh, this continued for a period of close to six years. Towards the end of the six years, after I came back from India, that's when I felt the Lord giving me a call in my heart uh, to start something that would complement what we were doing in our church then in Eastlands. Initially, before we started the church, we, we were serving in a ministry at uh, Maringo. Uh, Thereafter, we went and served shortly in a church in Kariobangi, still under the same ministry. And uh, we felt God leading us to, to go and start a branch in town. Because the people we were relating with then, our friends, we were in school together, could not come to where we were serving in Kariobangi. So we felt we needed to move and start another branch of the same church. So we moved to uh, YMCA. Uh, that was in 1991. We, we were given uh, two members to move with. Uh, that is Elder, Elder Okola and Jane Okola. I got married in 4th May 1991. But shortly after June, uh, that's about two months, I had um, to make a very big decision to leave the church that I was in, which I had joined in 1978. I was a youth 
pastor at some point, especially when Gio was going to India, uh, Gio Mulema. Uh, he was going to India to study. So when, we, uh, when he had a vision and he went to India, when he came back, his vision and ministry had expanded beyond where you could come back to that particular church. So he talked to my father-in-law, who was the bishop and the pastor of that church, Assemblies of Christ. So he was given leeway to go and start then Nairobi Gospel Center. Uh, I've been with GCI since it started uh, from day one. I happened to be part of Victory Fellowship and so when GCI started at uh, YMCA Chapel on the first day, I was one of the members. Uh, we were a few of us uh, on that day, but I've seen GCI grow and just being here today to see what God is doing is such an excitement. We were not so many of us during that time, um, but um, it was a blessing and it has always been a blessing uh, to be part of GCI. And for, as for me, as those, my wife has mentioned that she was there right from the beginning to see its growth from probably 10 or 15. For me, I joined when we were probably about 50 or 100 of us. And just to see that growth from that uh, 100, it's just been a great blessing. The numbers grew, I think we were about 100. Until God spoke to us through a man of God from Uganda and, and told us, uh, you, you need to move out. And they, it is possible to move out. We were very comfortable where we were, by the way, in Rosette Reso restaurant then was very comfortable and uh, we, we, didn't, we, we didn't struggle much because we were sharing with Victory Fellowship. So we'd pay maybe half, half, and we were very comfortable, a very comfortable place. But then we were scattered all over because the, the main service was now being held at uh, Rosette Restaurant. The children were going to uh, Ngara, a bless, blessed house, to have their Sunday school. Sometimes they would actually go to my house. Uh, so the children would have their, their Sunday school. First they started in my house. Then after a while now it moved to Ngara, a blessed house. And this man of God actually motivated us and told us, hey, you, you need to, to move out of your comfort zone. You need to get your own property because they had done the same also in Uganda. So he challenged us to give to God and to contribute towards buying land. And we did that and people gave money. You know, God touched people and people gave money. That is how we secured now the property here in Embakasi, the current place where we are. So we moved to Embakasi in 2001 and uh, put up a structure. Then we moved in the way it was a roof and I think the pillars, if I can remember, it was hard. It was really, really hard because it would rain, the wind would come, we didn't have a place for our children. But anyhow, we moved. It looked like it was so far. It has been the hand of God. If we trace back into history, uh, June 9th, year, um, in the year uh, 1991, we were a handful of people, probably about 10, 15 people were gathered there on the first Sunday. Then God would, was able to grow us again and move us, and we went to the Caboose restaurant, now known as Rosette Restaurant now, on top of Harambe Cooperative Plaza. Uh, Junction, House Life Avenue, and Uhuru Highway. And um, yeah, God helped us to grow as a church, as a ministry, to about 100 people. And for the many years we stayed there uh, till we relocated to where we are now at uh, um, Tasia here, uh, we moved about probably 70 to 100 people who moved to these premises. And God was able to help us to purchase this property. Uh, where we now build this sanctuary. Our 30 year story has been a testament of God's faithfulness, a vision that started in June 1991 at a small chapel at the YMCA on the State House Road with our sunny school meeting just under a tree, has grown to see us create a family of believers rippled across the nation of Kenya. The beautiful memories are those that we will hold dear. Uh, the, the church saw it fit to start the children's church and it was started in 1991 in our geo Charles Mlema Kinusu 
and uh, Pastor Nelly Mlema in their residence in Mawenzi Garden. All the children's activities were being done in that house. And then we moved to YMCA where the children's church sat under the tree. We were meeting, actually we were meeting under the tree. And we had a lot of challenges, especially when it rained, you can imagine. From YMCA, we moved, we relocated to uh, Caboose Restaurant, now known as Ro Rosette Restaurant. And as we moved there, we were now meeting under the, in the basement. And uh, we, I can't say that there were no challenges there because we were near the road. And therefore, you can imagine the noise from the moving, on moving traffic. But we thank God because it was short lived. Because uh, the church acquired, uh, uh, not really acquiring, but we hired the church office at Ngara. And we saw it fit for the children to move and meet in the church office. I think one of the moments that I remember, from, if I could go back to my earliest memories, was um, when we were meeting in town. Church was in town at that time. And um, yeah, as a child, we would wake up very early in the morning and accompany our parents to church. And um, at the time, actually, Sunday school never used to be the way we see it right now. We never used to meet um, in a wonderful building like this. At the time, we used to meet in Gara. So my earliest memory is us getting on a matatu. The church would get us, um, would hire a matatu, and we would all be bunched up together, and we would drive all the way to Ngara. I cannot remember the building, to be honest, but I remember very well it was in Ngara. And um, we were about, I don't think we were more than 50 children at the time, probably way less than that. And the office was on fourth floor. So every Sunday we would uh, commandeer a matatu, and we we all, all the children go in, we go all the way to Ngara. And you see it was very stressful, sometimes you are worried, you don't know if you are taking care of the babies nicely. A child actually had fallen off through the stairs and it was caring, but God never allowed any of them to be hurt. <coughs> um, and uh, the other thing I remember about the church was uh, when we moved to Blessed House, it was evident that we were going to move out of town. It was becoming too small for us. And as God began to bring many people to us in uh, 2000, uh, there was now that opportunity to come. We got the land this side in Feather, and we, uh, Pastor Simon and I moved first to, to a house near the church so that we can prepare ourselves to, to really begin the church this other side of town. And I remember that uh, for a year, the office for GCI was hosted in our servant quarter. The prayer meetings, the cashers, Bible study was there because as we were building here, because we had an open space and uh, it was not convenient for people to meet in the evenings. And Sunday school now moved to our house, our sitting room and our, our, our veranda and the compound. And, um, one of the things that I remember very clearly was the children used to fear the dogs. <laughs> you know, we had so many dogs, so it was really challenging. <clears throat> but God was so gracious to us because brethren gave out their cars to transport the children now to our house. For, it must have been for more than one year. And as we moved here, we were happy because it was our property, but the children still didn't have any meeting place. The only place that we could meet was in the... Uh, was in the, I remember it was a small container that was used as a storage during weekday because of course we were constructing, a, there was a small structure that the church was constructing. There's a container there at the corner, there next to the washrooms. Um, you can pay it a visit one of these days. <laughs> you guys can pay it a visit, but that's where we used to meet for Sunday school, a small class. And we were about 15 and the container was stuffy and it was hot, but we didn't have space. So we would make use of every <laughs> small space that we see. Um, so we met in the container for a very long time. And then we also met in Pastor, um, Pastor Elder Okola's office, the former Pastor Dreese's office. I'm not sure what, whose office it is now, but we used to meet there as well. 
um, so the service would go on and us we would be on this other side so you'd literally hear everything that is happening in the service but we managed we managed to listen and to you know to listen to what the teacher was saying and uh, it was it was fun sometimes before again the church decided that they were going to build for the children a structure and we thank God because the structure that the church constructed for the children uh, can, can accommodate over 1,000 children. We thank God because from a humble beginning of about 16 children who were meeting at Mawenzi Garden and uh, two teachers, two, a group of over 1,000 children and a staff of uh, the staff of uh, 59 Sunday school teachers. So part of the history is how the church started from, uh, I, I know from the house uh, of the geo where most of the things were done and then to YMCA and then to Caboose and all those movements. And then of course here when the church was just a tabernacle without walls and all that. So many times when you look at where the church has come from, then you can really appreciate what God has done with that church. I think for me this history is very, very important because it shows us the journey of faith of those who went ahead of us and uh, prepared the way actually up to the place where we are. I normally tell people, and I've been preaching this at our central church, I've been telling them you can never know how to give thanks to God without going back the whole journey that you have walked. In fact, I came to realize any thanksgiving doesn't make any meaning if you cannot trace the end from the beginning. And that's why God told Moses to tell the people to remember the whole way. The whole way. H-W-H-O-L-E. He told them, remember the whole way. Simply remember Egypt and how you, you lived there. Come to the, the Exodus. Remember how you crossed the Red Sea. Remember what happened in the wilderness, the manna I gave you. Remember the, 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 the meat I gave you, the water I gave you. Remember how I shielded you from the enemies that were trying to obstruct you from getting into the land. Remember how you crossed the Jordan. He, he told them when you reach the land, remember the whole way. In 2014, another great vision was born with the birth of rapid church planting strategy RCPS at GCI Central. This vision envisaged that by the year 2030, we will have at least one church planted in the 47 counties of Kenya. As of June 2022, GCI has planted a total of 24 churches across the nation. That strategy, what we call as the rapid church planting strategy, would have never been any close to our hearts if GCI had never gone autonomous. Because that's a step that we can easily miss. We were served under this church that had sent me for a period of time, until the year 2004. That's when we began to sense that there was something bigger than just being a branch of a church. I think that's very important for me to mention here. And uh, the year 2004, our church had grown. I can just say it had grown. I don't want to say more than what, no, 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 we had just grown. And we reached a position where we felt God was showing us something bigger than just being a local church. And so we sought autonomy to become a church that would propagate its gospel and have uh, a vision that is bigger than a local church. And by God's grace, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. My then pastor, who was then my bishop, you know, graciously allowed us to begin to, be, to, to go autonomous with his blessings. And we were able to start what, we, what is now commonly called Gospel Centers International. Operating under the earlier cover of uh, Assemblies Christ Evangelistic Holiness Church, we realized we are getting limited because we had outgrown that uh, vision, that cover. Uh, but we did not want to break away the way churches break away. We decided to sit down with our bishop then and discuss with him and tell him what we want to do. And he was gracious enough, a very good man of God. He allowed us to go on our way, and he even came officially to hand over the certificate to us of registration, and he prayed for us and released us 
to be an independent ministry. So I'm very proud. GCI is not a breakaway church. And we've gone from 205, 204 to 206 after launching, and we've gone up to 214. This period of time, we were simply doing nothing but consolidating ourselves. And thank God for the peace that he gave us, because during that period of time, we never had issues that would really affect our church majorly in terms of growth. And those who've been with us long enough, they know that was a period of peace and the church grew. And the, the main reason for us taking that period of time was for us to set structures in place that would enable us to now propagate our church into just more than one local assembly. So we put structures in place. Uh, we stabilized the central church. We stabilized our leadership. And come 2014 is when the Lord now opened my eyes to something that would become the rapid church planting strategy. Our idea was how do we now grow GCI from just one church to many churches. And in the process of Gio thinking hard about it, God gave him this uh, rapid church planting strategy in the year 2014. And uh, it, was, it started like a joke where somebody says, why don't you adopt a co your county where you come from? When you retire at, or when you go home for holidays, where do you go to church? Don't you want to have the same experience that you have here in our church? You have it in the village where you come from. So people were coalesced around their counties where they come from. And they were told to adopt those counties. Begin praying together. Begin thinking of how you can establish a church in your county where you can be going when you go home. And he came up with this RCPS and, um, and adoption of uh, counties and we really questioned him. We asked him many questions and uh, asked him to clarify. And that helped him to put, on, to put together a small document, which he used to, to teach. And he took a couple of Sundays to tell people about a rapid church planting strategy and the use of members of GCI Central as the conduit and the pathway that we are going to have these churches in the counties. RCPS stands for Rapid Church Planting Strategy which is a vision that was conceived by our general officer, Reverend Charles Mbulema, in the year 2014. The vision aims at planting a church in the 47 counties of our country by the year 2030. The vision is a member-driven initiative, uh, and that means the members of a particular county uh, comes together, mobilize themselves in prayer, they mobilize resources, with a strategy of starting a church in their home county. Seven years down the line, since this vision started, uh, we have been able to plant 22 churches uh, under this initiative. We are currently in 20 counties in this country. We, were, we had four pillars that we, we were, that we began with, because you can't just say I'm, I'm adopted. We felt we shall first answer the prayer Jesus said, pray that God may send help us. So we began with the first pillar of RSPS was prayer. And as people came together to adopt their counties, we mandated them to pray for their counties. Then number two, we wanted to find out pray for what? For the harvest. And the harvest was soul willing. So we said pray and also do what? Begin to, 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 to mobilize yourself for evangelism. And then number three, raise resources. Because it's not cheap to preach the gospel. Resources to reach the people, resources to buy land, resources to build churches. And number four, ask God to give us a set man for every place, a pastor. From within or without, who we can send to go there and plant a church. So those are the four pillars of RCPS. And that's what we've run with until today. The first scripture that came into my mind was when Jesus was with his disciples. And he looked and he saw. In fact, the Bible says suddenly he looked and he saw the, the crowd that was following him. Then he turned to them and he says, he cried out and he says that uh, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. First he says, the Bible says he had, he, he had compassion on the people who are following him because they were like sheep without a shepherd. That's the first time in scripture where the Lord is asking for prayer. I have never seen Jesus asking anybody to pray, <laughs> to pray for him or pray for whatever. But here he, he asked for, he said, pray that the God of the harvest may send in harvesters. Because he understood his purpose of coming on earth was basically to reach to the people 
who are out there and to bring people into the kingdom of God. How is that going to happen without laborers? So that's the, that's the first thing which came into my focus. Then as, we all, as I looked at that portion of scripture, I realized that we have so much around us and within this nation that we can do for God. So many people, so many, so many areas that have never been reached by the gospel. This was happening exactly when Kenya was transiting from a centralized government to a devolved government. And I'm sure many of us who are Kenyans would understand what I'm talking about. Where we felt like everything was found in the city of Nairobi. If you wanted any services, you come to Nairobi. If you wanted uh, a job, you come to Nairobi. So people left the rural areas, which is actually almost 95% of Kenya, to come and scramble for the small cake that we had in the city of Nairobi. So when this system came up that let's now share what we have and send it out where, where the people are, I felt that was not just a move that was being instigated politically or economically for the benefit of this nation. It had a spiritual perspective to it. And that's where RCPS was born from. We decided, why don't we ride on the wave of this new move that God is bringing into our nation to also take the gospel from within Nairobi to outside, out, out, outskirts of Nairobi and indeed into the counties that we are going to. So we gave birth to this movement, which we are calling Rapid Church Planting Strategy. For the government, it was Rapid Church, I mean, Rapid Development of the, of, of, of the nation. But for us, it was Rapid Church Planting Strategy. And the idea was we make, we make our members aware that as much as we are talking about devolving into counties, they can also devolve spiritually into their counties. And this is why the question of adopt a county came in. So the first thing was we asked our members to coalesce around their counties. If you come from a, spe a specific county, adopt that county as a place where God is sending you to reach those people with the gospel and plant a church there. RCPS is the best thing that ever happened to GCI Ministries because it is in line. I remember when the vision was casted, Gio used um, the, the scripture in Matthew chapter 9 verse 35. I remember it very well. And uh, so he shared about the way uh, people are perishing out there, they are scattering, they are, they are wandering like sheep without a shepherd and then casted the vision of going there and housing the people of God, finding the lost and housing them. And uh, so this RCPS again is in line with the mission of the church and the vision of the church. When we say that um, it's the great commission fulfilled with excellence, the, the most important thing that the Lord Jesus Christ left with the church is to go out and to reach out to the lost to preach the gospel and uh, to disciple the lost, to teach the word of God and all that. And RCPS is part of that. You can never reach out to people and teach them unless you have put them in a place where they can come and then the teaching can take place. Having achieved all these milestones, uh, I can describe the journey of RSPS in church planting is interesting, inspiring, and challenging. There are many challenges that come, but I can focus only two. Number one is building a strong team, which is very difficult to establish, but it is doable. Number two, Mobilizing resources, money, people, land, and the legal aspect. Such so that whatever you are doing, you are not doing it against the law. So when I look back and see the things that we did, the challenges we went through, there are many challenges in church planning. You walk with the people and in the process some people leave you. Uh, we were left by some important people on the way, but we still carried on and because we were focused on where we wanted to go. And uh, that's why, uh, as of today, I can say we have matured and we, ha we have gone through ups and downs and we are much stronger from what we have learned from the history and the challenges we have gone through. Every member of GCI, Gospel Centers International, should pride himself in this brand, this model of RCPS. 
This is a model that you will not find anywhere else. This is a very unique model. In fact, when I look at the model and how it has now been structured, I actually say that, um, that our, 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 our general overseer is actually an apostle. That is actually an apostolic direction. I want to see this church reach every county by the year 2030. And by the time we are handing over to the new generation, which is just about, we will be happy to sit back and see them carry the vision and the baton of this, of this church to the next level. I think our SPS is very key um, uh, aspect that uh, informs the design of the youth ministry. One, because um, the youth, uh, the youth, uh, the demographic that covers um, the youth ministry, the, the teenagers, come from different backgrounds. Uh, they come from uh, different uh, ethnic communities, and and um, with time, I think our youth ministry can be a model to inform the churches, the other assemblies of GCI, of what it takes to come up with a youth ministry. Observe the times, the demographic, differentiate the different demographic within your congregation to take note of the teenagers within your, your congregation and allot space and time so that uh, the ministry can be differentiated along the ages. Uh, and so that this is a model that I think can be replicated in all the other assemblies that are coming up. I think one of the things I need to mention maybe is that, um, uh, you know, we talk about an age group of 23 and above. So many of these young people are actually currently involved in the RCPS program. We have a good number of them involved in uh, the outreach ministry, the prayer ministry, you know, and, uh, and also in the county initiatives, you find very many of these young people actually in the county uh, programs. Yeah? So what we do is we try to encourage them uh, to get connected and to be involved in the missions and the programs that are being run in these counties. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we try to do also is every time we have a, a planting of churches or launching of churches, we encourage our members to participate by either in the worship or in the prayer or in the mission or in the preaching also yeah, of the word of God once they go out. So you find most of these young people actually already involved into the county programs. Yeah? So I think um, I would just encourage them to get more active, more involved, because as we speak currently, they're actually in these programs. Moses had to tell those men who are, who are taking the land of the Amorites, the three tribes of Israel, to leave their wives, leave their children, leave their cattle, and connect with the brethren who yet would receive their inheritance. Together, that's what I'm calling synergy here, and that's the point that I'll be driving home. Central Church, we have done well. We have a beautiful sanctuary, we have settled. Utawala, we are doing very well. We are just about to settle. Kitengela, the same. But you see what God is telling us is that we cannot let those brethren who are starting churches in other places where they have not even gotten land, they have not even begun anything, they can't do it on their own. We need synergy. For those of us who have settled, we must leave our wives and our children, meaning we must leave things that may make us comfortable and connect with these brethren who are here to get their inheritance. That's what I'm talking about. And this is where our strategy comes in. And that's the strategy we're using at GCI Central and also GCI as we take the land, as, that, as we plant churches in the places where we are going. Find a place, find your county, adopt your county. If you, your county is far, adopt a county, join other people like what we've done here in, here in Kajiado. Uh, we don't come from Kajiado, but we, more, many of us here have adopted this county. And we are looking forward that uh, very soon we will pacify this county, we will reach the border in the manga there, and we will go to Tanzania and be able to ensure that we begin fulfilling the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We really want to duplicate ourselves in every county in this country. And therefore, my parting shot is to tell our members to support RCPS so that we can become uh, more uh, a bigger ministry than we are today. I don't mind even if we went international. We should be able to plant churches in Uganda, in Tanzania, Rwanda, and move out of this country, become international because we are GCI. <laughs>
We are looking forward in doing three more churches in three different counties before the close of this year. That is Wansingishu County in Eldoret Town, in Makueni County, and in Molanga County at a place called Keno. We are looking forward for your support. As I leave you with this question, who will go first in the remaining 27 counties? God bless you. Allow me to acknowledge my wife Nelly, who has been so gracious to me. Believe me, she's been gracious to me. We began this fellowship in our house. Our children have grown in this house with people. We didn't have money, we did not have anything, but we trusted God. The little we had, we have shared. We've shared with people, we've shared with our families. And this wonderful woman has stood on my side. She has helped me to bring the church to where it is. My children, Joy, my children, Vicky, my children, Austin, you've been so precious, you've been so good. You've continued to love Jesus and to serve him despite all that we have gone through as a family. I can just want to let you know I love you and I appreciate you and I'm so grateful that God gave you to me. And I want to tell members of GCI who have stood with me over the period of time, thank you very much for your faithfulness. And also thank you for believing in me and in believing in our vision. And most important, in trusting God to use you to be a blessing, not only to your family, but a blessing also to the church family here at GCI and to the rest of the people who follow us online and those who are friends and partners of GCI. Can I please wish you a very wonderful 31st anniversary. We would have done this last year, marking 30 years, but we couldn't because of the reasons you know. But today as we assemble together 31 years down the road, it can never be any better than just to say thank you to all of you and to wish you well a very memorable time. Let me believe with you that as we begin the 32nd year, GCI will now go to another level that we have never, never seen before. The Lord gave us the grace to capture the land that he has given to us. Plant churches, raise ministers, raise ministries. Our children that were, that were born in this church, I bless them. They're the ones leading us in worship and they're the ones who are helping us do many things. They're the ones in the media. In fact, some doing this interview are just the kids that we have seen grow in our church. We want to say to you, God bless you and may you excel in the things that you are doing. May the Lord help you to become even better than us, a hundred times better than us, now and in the days to come. Happy birthday to all of you, and happy birthday to GCI members. God bless you. It's my pleasure to be with you and to host you during this year. Hallelujah. Besides all this, GCI has been privileged to be a carrier of God's blessing to the community in many ways including the King's International Academy, which is one of the best schools in the region. We also appreciate the good partnership that we've had with other ministries that have faithfully worked with us throughout this journey. To mention but a few, the Mission Church under the leadership of Rev. Greg Johnson and Cedar Mountain Chapel under the leadership of Rev. Stephen Wengum. From all walks of life, generation to generation, as we celebrate a historic past, a blissful present, we urge you as the right person for his mission to be part of the great future untold. Happy Anniversary GCI!